question. Um, to what extent do does the RICS code um, force a managing agent to do something that is not in the lease? For example, you gave the example of um, antisocial behaviour. Mm. You, you mentioned noise. Um, if the lease says there should be no musical instrument played, and mm. basically makes no, no provision for noise apart from one clause that says there should be no musical instrument played between 11pm and 6am, mm. but a resident is having problems with neighbours who are shouting all mm. the way through the night. It's not a musical instrument, um, so it's not covered by the lease. Mm. But you've said um, that they should, not must, so they should um, do their best to solve antisocial yeah. behaviour and stuff. Now, if the managing agent says, nothing I can do, it's not a musical instrument, I'm only following the lease, mm. to what extent does RICS come into play here? Um, I think that, yeah, first of all, the, the lease, yeah, anything which is in a lease is, is something which can be dealt with in a slightly different way because a, a breach of a covenant in the lease is something entirely within a managing agent's remit to enforce. Um, if it falls outside of the lease, then it is a case of a best practice. So um, there are managing agents out there who are not members of professional bodies such as ARMA um, who absolutely require agents to follow this code to the letter um, and in those scenarios that agent um, should be aware of this like you know, the highway code when you're driving your car around but um, they don't, there is no legal way to make them deal with it, it's a best practice that they should do if they're a good agent and if you then went the step further of taking that scenario to a tribunal, which you probably wouldn't do in that particular example, then the tribunal might look at it and say, well, actually, according to the RICS code, the agent should have tried their best to deal with this. They should have spoken to them and written to them before escalating it to a, to a different body. Um, and they haven't done that, then the tribunal would probably find in, in your favour that the agent hadn't followed the code and done everything that they could. Um, quite what the, the repercussions of that would be in this particular scenario is, is it's a slightly odd one because there isn't really a financial loss or, or, or anything isn't, like that. Isn't there an opportunity here also for uh, a breach of quiet enjoyment of, of, yeah. of the property which every leaseholder has? Quiet enjoyment doesn't mean quiet. <laughs> it doesn't mean it's nothing to do with noise <laughs> at all. Quiet enjoyment means that nobody else can come and turf you out of your flat. Okay. So it, it's 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 very misleading. It's nothing to do with noise. Okay. Um, but it does say in Part 19 as well that uh, a good uh, managing company or managing agent should have clear policies and procedures for handling disputes in place and make them known. Um, and they should be able to be accessed. It should. I think that clause, though, primarily relates to disputes between the managing agent and a leaseholder, rather than disputes between leaseholders. I think, I think this is part 19, disputes between occupiers. Oh, OK. Part 19. So I think, you know, again, I suspect that not all management companies will have that in place. Um, we ours haven't, so we developed our own. Mm. Um, and we've got a, we, we delivered to every apartment a policy documents pack, uh, which we ask them to keep in a safe place. And we've got policies on, they're not enforceable, but it does contain, well, this one's a good neighbour policy, it does contain everything in the lease which people are required to uh, keep, and also our interpretation of what that means at City Key and what we will do, what we're obligated to do as the management company responsible. Plus it also says what you should do as a tenant in the eventuality of something going wrong. So it gives people a very clear hold on, on word to take things and how to escalate. So starting with face to face and then taking it further, we, we go through all the list. We also have one on a pet policy, which was our latest one, major problem with pets, I'm sure you've all got them. That's very difficult to do anything about. Water leak control and management. Most of our building insurance is down to water leaks. And uh, this tells people how to check the premises. 
every six months and advises them to do it. And the final one, we have a, a big estate with all the traffic. We have a traffic management policy which clearly tells people what we expect them to do and uh, how a company that we've brought in to manage the traffic will deliver fines to people if they don't adhere to our procedures, which we can Can do. I ask a question, Joe? Because mm -hmm. you've produced these policies and they're really, really good. If a buyer is coming into the, to the property, um, they will approach their, or their solicitors or the seller's solicitors on their behalf will approach the managing agents, request copies of the management company accounts um, for the last three years, request information about anticipated expenditure. Would they get those in the pack? They should do, yeah. Because yeah. I think that's yeah. absolutely yeah. excellent and yeah. something I'm yeah. sure most buyers, um, particularly of a second-hand property, would really appreciate getting that <coughs> kind of information. Because I don't... I mean, I don't do, I do very little residential conveyancing, but, you know, those kind of packs of information would be just perfect for people. Even people who are buying the property as an investment mm. would find that really helpful because it will help them to understand mm. what the expectations are. And they're all are. on our websites as well. Yeah. Um, the same at City uh, Armstrong, for you, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> We've delivered, hand-delivered a copy to everybody and mm. our solicitors. They, they can be actually a, a really good management tool as well from the point of view of a managing agent. It's a, a lot of leases will um, contain uh, something to the effect of uh, a tenant must adhere to any estate regulations that are made from time to time and those sorts of things can be incorporated into that to then be more enforceable by the managing agent to make sure good and, behaviour and a occurs. Lot of, a lot of leases will contain a provision about mm. observing ma regulations made from time to time for the management mm. of the development, which I think really helps because it means the lease will effectively back that up mm. yeah. um, as if it was a covenant in the original lease. Mm. Plus, we, we, we recognise as well that people don't read their lease. No. It's a document that is totally off-putting. But when you, when you take it to bite-sized bits, which actually include everything in the lease that's required, and it shows how our policy is built upon the lease, and is its foundation is the lease. It's much easier for people to grasp, and they do, they do read it. Plus, we can say to people, well, when I've seen people walking around with dogs off the lead, I jump into my pipe, rush outside, and say, "Excuse me, have you seen this? It says that you shouldn't be walking your dog in the grass, not on a lease." Ooh. And they're kind of, we've got something to challenge people with. It's not a personal <coughs> aggression on my part. It's, this is what we all adhere to where we live. You must be new here, you know, handed across. Those, it just helps in those kind of situations. 